Well, good morning on this uh, Wednesday morning, the 2nd of September. I'm here in Adelaide at the moment, so for morning prayer. Today we um, remember the martyrs of Papua New Guinea. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Blessed are you, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for you have blessed us in Christ Jesus with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. You chose us to be yours in Christ before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before you. In love you destined us to be your children, through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of your will, to the praise of your glorious grace, which you freely bestowed on us in the beloved. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 126. When the Lord turned again the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those restored to life. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue was singing. Then said they among the heathen, The Lord has done great things for them. Truly, the Lord has, has done great things for us, and therefore we rejoiced. Turn again our fortunes, O Lord, as the streams return to the dry south. Those that sow in tears shall reap with songs of joy. They that go out weeping bearing the seed shall come again in gladness, bringing their sheaves with them. We consecrate this day to your service, O Lord. May all our thoughts, words, and actions be well-pleasing to you, and serve the good of our brothers and sisters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The first reading comes from uh, the Book of Wisdom, chapter 3, verses 1 to 9. But the souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and no torment will ever touch them. In the eyes of the foolish they seem to have died, and their departure was thought to be a disaster, and their going from us to be their destruction, but they are at peace. For though in the sight of others they were punished, their hope is full of immorality. Having been disciplined a little, they will receive great good because God tested them and found them worthy of himself. Like gold in the furnace he tried them, and like a sacrificial burnt offering he accepted them. In the time of their visitation they will shine forth, and will run like sparks through the stubble. They will govern nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord will reign over them for ever. Those that trust in him will understand truth, and the faithful will abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are upon his holy ones, and he watches over his elect. Second reading comes from the book of Revelation, chapter 6, verses 9 to 11. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slaughtered for the word of God and for the testimony they had given. They cried out with a loud voice, Sovereign Lord, holy and true, how long will it be before you judge and avenge our blood on the inhabitants of the earth? They were each given a white robe and told to rest a little longer, until the number would be complete, both of their fellow servants and of their brothers and sisters, who were soon to be killed as they themselves had been killed. May your word live in us and bear much fruit to your glory. 
We praise you, O God, we acclaim you as Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, the cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all praise. The Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you took our flesh to set us free, you humbly chose the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Loving God, you made your church to grow through the zeal, courage and unflinching witness of your servants martyred in Papua New Guinea. Give to us all and your people such steadfast faith in your good purposes that we may serve faithfully wherever you have stationed us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, we do thank you for the example of those uh, martyrs of Papua New Guinea who died at the hands of the Japanese during the Second World War. We remember those who were based here in Adelaide before they uh, went on service, the nursing sisters and those who supported them. Lord, we thank you for their example to us of living lives of godly service dedicated to you even to the point of death lord we continue to pray for our nation for those in authority for a continuing balance between the preservation of life and the uh, ongoing work of our economy Lord, we pray for the Premier of Victoria and members of the Parliament there and the burden that they carry in leadership, the decisions that they have to make are balancing the needs of people to uh, be sure of a return to whatever the new normal is and yet still protecting our lives with the number of new cases and deaths. Lord, we pray for those giving advice to government, both in Victoria, but also throughout this nation. We pray uh, for those who are separated from loved ones and have been for now for many, many months. Pray there may be the opportunities to reconnect and to visit and to see um, children, grandchildren, parents, friends, just to uh, have those relationships, in a sense, uh, restored in a one-on-one -on -one basis, a face-to-face -face basis. Lord, we continue to pray for those who work so hard to uh, keep uh, people alive, particularly the workers in intensive care units, for those who are on respirators, for the fear that their loved ones and their families must have for them. Lord, we pray for those who are grieving the death of people that they've cared for and loved so deeply, whether 
it's as a result of the pandemic or for other reasons. We pray for ourselves and for each other. Lord, help us to uh, reach out if we need uh, to connect with people. Help us to ask, are you okay? And to uh, know how to respond if someone tells us that they're not. Lord, help us to uh, break down those barriers that keep us from asking for help when we need it. And Lord, we pray that you will bind us together in unity. Lord, we pray for your church throughout the world. We pray for the Anglican Communion and our and the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin. We pray for its uh, various provinces and dioceses throughout the world, for the other three instruments of communion, the Primates Meeting, the Anglican Consultative Council, and the Lambeth Conference. We pray for the church here. We pray for the uh, meeting of the leaders of Christian churches in South Australia reference group this morning as it plans for the next meeting in October. We pray for the way that we can work together on those things where we have a common mind and respect and the differences that do exist between us. And we pray for the Anglican Church here in South Australia, for our Metropolitan Archbishop Jeff, and we pray also in his role as the primate of the Anglican Church of Australia. We pray for the three dioceses, for the Diocese of Adelaide, the assistant bishops, for Chris, Denise and Tim. Pray for the Diocese of the Murray, Bishop Keith and Alice, for the Diocese of Loch, for myself as bishop and for Jan. We pray for Jan as she prepares to uh, travel over to Canberra tomorrow the opportunity of seeing her mum but also of catching up uh, with family and with our two grandchildren. Lord we pray for the Diocese of Mandalay, Bishop David Yin Yin Yang, Mary and Solomon. We give thanks for the partnership between Wolokra and Mandalay. Lord continue to strengthen us as your church and witness in the world that people may come to taste a bit of the kingdom in all that we do say and who we are. Eternal God and Father, by whose power we are created and by whose love we are redeemed, guide and strengthen us by your Spirit that we may give ourselves to your service and live this day in love to one another and to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant us to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus that we may with one voice glorify our God and Father. Amen. Well, true blessing upon you this day in all that you have to do. May you know the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Bye-bye.